These were the scenes that played out mere hours after Israel's government canceled the reasonableness law in July. The law is a basic legal tenet meant to keep the government in check. It's the first of hundreds of judicial changes proposed by Netanyahu's government, changes damaging Israel's economy, security, diplomatic ties, and domestic stability. We're already in the most severe domestic crisis in Israel's history, and it's going to get worse before getting better. Whether the Supreme Court invalidates the July vote, leaves it alone, or Netanyahu's government rejects the court's invalidation, Israel is steeped in constitutional crisis that's forcing its security chiefs to choose whether they defend the government or the law. There is a limit. There is a limit that we won't serve a king. The king is Benjamin Netanyahu, or King Bibi, as his supporters refer to him. The common understanding is his government's push to weaken Israel's courts is meant to create a loophole that will keep Bibi out of jail. He's currently on trial for corruption. We will not succumb uh, to this craziness that's overcome Israel. We will not succumb. Israel is already succumbing to investment pullbacks, a steady currency value decline, and existential security threats posed by countries poised to prey upon perceived weakness. First and foremost, Iran, and with Iran, Hezbollah and Hamas, are trying to create a situation of a multi-front war against Israel. If the government continues along its current trajectory, hundreds of proposed laws stand to strip Israel's courts of power, impede free speech, damage human rights, and introduce religious legislation. Israel's parliament is due to reconvene in October, following summer recess. Voting on proposed judicial overhaul laws is expected to resume at that time. Stephanie Fried, CGTN, Central Israel.